Mr. Nolan, hey, it's good to see you again. Hi, nice Hi. to meet you again as well. Thank you for this masterpiece. It's one of the best films I've seen in ever in my entire life. I think the 70 millimeter IMAX experience is the most immersive experience I've ever had in a movie theater, ever. Wow. Um, I wanted to talk to you. I was blown away by the three timeline structure. Do you mind just for my audience explaining how the timelines worked out with the one week, the one day, the one hour, and how you decided to intercut them the way you did? Well, we divide our story into land, sea, and air so that we can stay in a very subjective mode of storytelling, really immersive. But by cross-cutting these different timelines that run at different speeds, we sort of build up a bigger picture of the events for people who, who don't know the story of Dunkirk, which I think is a, a great story. So we have one storyline that takes place over a week, and that's the guys on the beach there. Uh, we have a civilian boat coming over to help with the evacuation, and that's one day. And then we have a Spitfire fire, uh, dog fighting in the skies above the beach. And that's about an hour of flying time that we had over the beach. Now, I think you, one of the things you do so well is practical in-camera effects. And I've been following your work forever. When you put that 18-wheeler in the dark night, you have the 100-foot spinning hallway in Inception. I was nerding out beyond belief. What was the hardest practical effect to pull off here in Dunkirk? Gosh, what do you think is the hardest? Gosh, it was all so hard. I mean, I would say that... The but yeah, each different um, timeline actually had its own challenges, I would say. I mean, the planes were obviously very difficult. Um, but then the boats were really, really hard yeah. because, like, you know, everyone was out on them all day, every day, and the weather was crazy. And, um, and sinking. And sinking. The sinking that was... Yeah, how many ships? Four. We had to sink four ships. Oh, my God. Which, you know, James Cameron only had to sink one. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had less money, yeah. Uh, no, I think that was a huge challenge. I mean, we never worked with boats before. Uh, and there was, a, there was a lot, I mean, you've seen the film, you understand there's a lot of mechanics to do with boats and, and uh, movement and water and sinking and, and so forth. And uh, yeah, that, that was the biggest challenge. Really. We set the water on fire too. I mean, <laughs> yes, you know, the more I think about it, the more I think that, yeah. Now, I, if you read my Twitter timeline right now, I know you don't have Twitter, but it would be 175 million tweets about Dunkirk and sending people to see it in 70 millimeter IMAX, expressing the importance of the actual cinematic experience. Tonight, we're here at a theater where they're showing it in IMAX laser, where you still get the 1431 aspect ratio. Can you talk about the difference of like what you're seeing in the digital projection of a 1431? And do, would you recommend digital 1431 over just normal 70 millimeter, even though it's digital versus film projection? Well, I mean, it would take too long to answer that question in <laughs> massive detail. Right. I mean, what you get with the IMAX laser projecting is incredible contrast, uh, similar to that of film, an increased uh, appearance of sharpness, particularly. Um, you have you know, 4K projectors uh, in the Xenon version, in the laser version. You've just got this very bright light source. So we remastered the film for this format. I think it's going to look great here tonight. I think it's a great way to see the film. I think my favorite, I mean, my heart belongs to celluloid, yep. um, but if you're going to be uh, watching it in digital, um, a laser projector is a fantastic way to see it. Also because, as you say, it does preserve the original aspect ratio of much of the photography. Um, before I let you go, can you please walk me through the experience of going to Dunkirk for the first time? I know I was reading the story about that, and then also how, how you did decide to actually shoot on location, but first that experience that you two both had going there for the first time. I love that story. Well, you know, in, and it was the mid-90s and we were living in London and, you know, you kind of feel like you're a master of your universe when you're living in a city and you don't have any sense of uh, Mother Nature being as um, tricky as she can be. Um, and we went on a sailing trip with a friend on, on the weekend. That, you know, we thought this was going to be a fun little jaunt across the channel to Dunkirk. Um, but, you know, the weather was pretty awful and the seas were choppy and it, you know, what we thought was going to take about six hours, it's 19. Um, and it was definitely one of the most um, impactful experiences of my life and probably yours too. I mean, it really made an impression on both of us. And obviously we knew, you know, as English people, you grow up knowing the story of Dunkirk. And so we very much had that in mind as we were going there. But of course we knew that when we got there, we were going to get to go and have a snap up. French meal and <laughs> wander around the town of Dunkirk for the weekend um, and, and it was very very um, impactful thinking about what it would have been like to go through that not having the comfort of, of knowing what you know what, what you were walking into was a you know peaceful town. Yeah. Yeah. Real quick your experience? Well I mean very much that I mean these you, you come out of a crossing like that with some tiny taste of the sheer physical difficulty of making that crossing, but the psychological idea, the impact of 
people getting on those boats and knowing they were heading into a war zone. It's unthinkably brave. and something we really wanted to pay tribute to in the film. I know I've let you guys go, but thank you so much. I'm seeing Mr. Zimmer on Friday Night Live in concert. I'm hoping to hear some Dunkirk music. I don't know if he's added it to his set list yet, but have you seen the concert? Sure, I don't think he's had time yet. No Supermarine yet? I don't think so, not yet. It's a little bit complicated. It takes while his show is very complicated. It takes a while to put it all together. When I hear the Inception music, I'm going to start crying because it's amazing. One of the best movies ever made. Nice to meet you. So much pleasure, by the way. Thank you, Mr. Nolan, for